So we'll now switch back to English uh, for the final part of our e evening's entertainment. Um, and uh, we'll also switch back to uh, uh, an online format. Uh, we are going to have presentations by uh, two of the uh, um, uh, dispute resolution centers that uh, have uh, taken a keen interest in the Frogan's technology and the project. Um, the first one that we're going to talk to tonight is Christine Dorain. Uh, she is the National Arbitration Forum Director of Arbitration. Uh, we'll be speaking uh, to Christine directly. I'm not sure that she's online yet, is she? She? As you can see, we're using advanced technology to, uh, to do this. Um, Whilst we're getting ready, just after um, tell you what's going to go to happen after this, we will then have a pre-recorded presentation, um, and uh, then uh, we will have a presentation from uh, Thomas Pano, who is uh, on our legal staff at the uh, OP3FT. I think we have Christine on the line. Christine, hello. Can you hear me? Hi. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. Great. Great. Thanks for being with us. My name is Stefan van Gelder. I'm the Frogans ambassador. Uh, I'm just going to ask you uh, a few very short questions. Thanks for uh, uh, taking the time to be with us tonight. You're addressing a, a room full of people and also uh, you are being uh, broadcast on live and, and uh, uh, you're being followed by people uh, uh, all over the planet. So uh, uh, no pressure at all. Uh, just answer I, I the questions and we'll be fine. Um, if I can just start with an introduction on uh, what the NAF does, what it is, uh, keeping in mind that some people may not know what a, a, a Center for Dispute Resolution actually does and why it's necessary. Absolutely. So the National Arbitration Forum is a United States-based company that has been in business conducting traditional arbitrations and mediations for about around 30 years. And by traditional arbitrations and mediations, we refer to private dispute resolution mechanisms. So around the world, people can go to court, have their cases adjudicated by, by, by judges that in many cases are elected or appointed. Um, but in, in some cases, such as in the United States, the court systems can get very backlogged and get very busy administratively. And people can choose to bring those disputes to arbitration um, for um, adjudication of a case on the merits resulting in a final award or mediation, which is where the parties get together and um, agree or they collaborate on a, a, an outcome that they might agree with um, be, between each other. So um, that's, that's our main core business. And then we also do domain name dispute resolution, which is a little bit um, similar to traditional arbitration. Um, however, unlike the uh, traditional arbitration, which is um, basically done when the two parties are, are, are agreeing to the same jurisdiction, et cetera, sort of in real time, um, under the ICANN domain name, domain name system, when someone registers a domain name, they agree to be bound by the Uniform Domain Name Dispute Resolution Policy. Um, and there's actually a lot of um, similar policies. Um, that the UDRP is sort of used as the basis for those policies. So we do domain name dispute resolution, um, which again is like arbitration in that both parties present their case to an expert arbitrator. Um, and the cases are done very rapidly. So our traditional UDRP cases are done in around 45 days. Um, so you don't have to worry about jurisdictional issues if you have parties um, located in two different places of the world. Um, you can easily um, have these disputes um, handled through domain name dispute resolution. Um, and then we also have other programmatic arbitrations as well, which are not you know, domain name related. Thanks very much. So if I can summarize that, if you have a, a domain name related problem and you don't want to uh, endure the time or the expense of going to court, uh, then uh, a, an alternative dispute resolution procedure is the one to go for. And uh, I believe you are the second biggest uh, operator of such uh, disputes, is that correct? 
Yes, we are. We've handled, um, I haven't run the numbers lately, but probably close to 30,000 um, UDRP disputes. Um, and so we're, we're second behind WIPO. Right, so the, the Uniform uh, Domain Name Dispute Resolution Procedure, which was uh, uh, evolved through ICANN uh, policy development by the ICANN community, is something that you are, you're now looking to extend to the Frogans technology, is that correct? Can you explain how, how that works? Is it something uh, that, that is going to be similar to the UDRP? Uh, what's the system that Frogans is going to use? Um, yes, so the, the Frogans has basically taken the UDRP and all of the elements that, that people who are familiar with the domain name system now are used to and pulled that into the Frogans UDRPF. Um, and I think it is, um, and I think it's pretty, it's, it's, I think it's a pretty smart choice because what happens is people are aware are, that the brand owners are already aware of this as a mechanism. And, and like I said, we've handled tens of thousands of these cases. So, so the policy is out there as a mechanism for um, handling disputes. Um, I, I have a slideshow. I think you guys are looking at it. Um, so slide four sort of summarizes what the UDRP is. So the, um, the complainant would prove that they have a, a trademark and that the domain name is identical or confusingly similar to that trademark. Um, and, and the panel will apply the law of the region um, in, in dispute. So, so for instance, in jurisdictions that permit common law trademark rights, the panel will, will also permit the complainant to show that they have trademark rights um, through common law uh, uh, principles. Different jurisdictions apply. So, so if you are if you are located in um, in France, you can show that you have a trademark in France. So it doesn't it doesn't mean that you have to have a trademark any place specific. Um, then the domain name then the, the the burden sort of shifts, and the domain and then the panel will evaluate whether or not the domain name holder should have rights to that domain name because maybe the domain name is generic. Maybe the the respondent um, has a legitimate business and is, has been you know, running a legitimate business at the site. And then the panel will finally look and see what was sort of the intent of the domain name registrant. And were they trying to register the domain name with the trademark in mind? Were they registering the domain name with the intent to try to profit off of um, trademarks and, and, and the brand? Um, and this, the standard for this is preponderance of the evidence, which is slightly more than 50-50, the evidence tips in favor of the respondent. And this is because the, the remedies in these cases is just a transfer of the domain name. There's no um, you know, monetary remedies. There's no other sort of injunctive relief. There's no sort of punitive or, or punishment processes for the domain name registrant. Simply a transfer of the domain name from the domain name holder to the complainant. Now, if you slip a, skip ahead um, two slides, so the next slide sort of answers some other questions. Um, the Frogans, you'll see that the Frogans policy also is based upon the UDRP using the same uh, three elements that I was telling you about and using, utilizing the same remedies for the most part. A couple of the differences, of course, is the terminology that you've been hearing about all day long, Frogans addresses, um, network names versus, and site names instead of domain names. Um, as with the UDRP, the site names and network names can be transferred to a trademark holder under the UDRPF. But where there is a Frogans dedicated network, any site names within that Frogans dedicated network can only be canceled. So that is a slight difference, but it's not, it's not um, you know, a huge change with respect to how people view the UDRP. Thanks very much. So does that, am I correct in assuming that that means that because you've got two very similar procedures, you've been able to adapt very quickly to the Frogan's environment uh, to be able to uh, prepare to service any disputes that might come in. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. We, have, we, we handle everything electronically, and, and so people will submit their documents, and we can easily um, you know, adapt to the Frogan system. You, the, the benefit is that all of everything is kind of portable. The rules that go along with the policy are supplemental rules. Um, little tweaks um, need to be made, but the, really the rest of it is we're, we're pretty much ready to go when, when Frogans is ready to launch. 
Great. And, and as you're speaking, we're showing um, uh, slide eight of your slide deck, which uh, has a link to a dedicated page for the U UDRPF. So uh, anyone wishing to uh, have more information can, can go to that page. Christine, just maybe one final question. Um, can, you, you, you've got your hands full with traditional domain disputes. Uh, why take an interest in this? Um, well, because we are really um, working on positioning ourselves as being available for all different types of disputes in the internet and domain names community. And the Frogans web addresses is new and exciting and something different. And we really like to be involved with new and exciting different things. We were the first provider to step out and say we wanted to do URS. Um, we're actively working with different registries and registrars on their sunrise and registration eligibility policies. And when we were told about the Frogans addresses, it seemed like a really exciting opportunity to again do something different and provide dispute resolution services to people in this, this internet community. Christine, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, we thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we'll now switch to, um, uh, is it, Tom, are you going next or is it, uh, um, are we having a presentation? So we're going to switch to the second presentation, which is a, a pre-recorded one uh, um, from uh, Dennis Chai, who is uh, from the Asian Domain Name Dispute Resolution Center. Uh, he's the secretary uh, general of that center. Uh, so as you can see, uh, Frogans is already building up quite a lot of interest uh, from these dispute resolution centers and it is a crucial part of our rollout. Hello everyone, I'm Dennis Tai, I'm the Secretary General of ADN DLC, the Asian Domain Name Dispute Resolution Center. And first of all, I would like to say apologies to all of you that I'm not able to attend the conference in person. and. But anyway, I'm happy to make this video to introduce what is ADN DLC and what we do for Asia and for the world in terms of domain name dispute resolution um, process. And the ADN DLC is a non-profit making organization registered in Hong Kong. We were founded in 2002, more than 10 years ago, and we have been providing different kinds of dispute resolution service for domain names under different policies of ICANN and other organizations as well. And basically, the domain name dispute resolution services are provided through four offices located in major cities in Asia. I, like, for example, we have our Hong Kong office located in Hong Kong, of course, managed by Hong Kong International Arbitration Center. And then we have our Beijing office managed by another um, arbitration body called the China International Economic and Trade Arbitration Commission. And we have another two offices located in Seoul and in Kovarumpa as well. They are also managed by renowned arbitration commissions. They are which are very famous in providing dispute resolution services for a long time. And with the development of the internet, we are providing um, this kind of domain name dispute resolution services through an online platform, and we are so called this as an ODL platform, in which the parties to the complaint can file in a complaint and or to resolve their complaint through this online dispute resolution platform without in-person hearing, so which is well regarded as a fast track and low cost dispute resolution process. And that's why we have concluded more than thousands of domain name complaints under the UDLP. And we are the first UDLP, the Uniform Domain Name Dispute Resolution provider in Asia under the ICANN's UDLP policy. And in addition to UDLP, we also provide TDLP, the Registrar Transfer Dispute Resolution Service. And recently, we were also accredited by ICANN 
as a new GTLD dispute resolution service for providing ULS, the Uniform Rapid Suspension System um, Services, and also the TMPDDLP, the Trademark Post Delegation Dispute Resolution Policy. So we are a really a full spectrum dispute resolution provider providing all kinds of dispute resolution services for domaining or in connection with domaining. And in particular, I would like to highlight that the ADN DLC, with, its, with the support from its four offices, we are very much well versed in providing uh, dispute resolution proceedings in Asian languages. We manage this, per, uh, this kind of proceeding bilingually uh, in a lot of cases. Um, the Asian language that we are very good at include the Chinese and Korean and um, Malay and also the other Asian languages as well. So um, this is the basic profile of the ADN DLC and we trust that we have been functioning very well in the past 10 years and serving as a key platform for protecting um, the brand in cyberspace and providing um, fast track and um, economy uh, dispute resolution process for a lot of brand owners in Asia. So that's why quite a number of brand owners and trademark owners has have already used our services and we will continue to use our services um, for domain and dispute resolution. And in terms of the Fogon address, and there is a new opportunity. I see that it is a very good and very important development in terms of the internet technology. And the Fogon address, I myself see it is a very um, successful and very creative and very useful technology uh, in the future. Um, I was firstly introduced with this new technology in, in, uh, in, a, in an ICANN meeting early this year held in Singapore and I was very, um, I was deeply impressed by this new technology um, which is uh, very creative for publishing contents on internet or on, on website I um, have a lot of uh, confidence that this kind of technology will become very popular very soon and of course in Asia and I believe that a lot of internet users will like this new technology and in terms that's why that's um, I'm sure that with the increased use of the new technology and dispute it is inevitable so that's why it is necessary to have the dispute very good dispute resolution mechanism as a backup to support the development of this new technology and Again, the ADN DLC is one of the key provider uh, for domain name dispute resolution in the world, and we are very happy to support this kind of technology. That's why um, we are going to cooperate with uh, the OP3FT to set up the dispute resolution mechanism for Fulgen suggests in Asia managed by the ADN DLC. And the ADN DLC, again, will provide this. Um, uh, will um, deploy every resources to support the development of the dispute resolution mechanism for Fogon address. And here I would like to end of my presentation to all of you by uh, my greetings to all of you that uh, I wish you to have a very successful and fruitful conference in Paris and have a great day and if you have any question or query about the ADN DLC, please feel free to contact uh, me or contact my colleague in other offices. The details of the uh, our contact details are available on our website www.adndlc.org. And thank you for listening to my um, presentation. I uh, wish you all the best and have a great day. Thank you and congratulations. Hello everyone, I'm Dennis Tai, I'm the Secretary General of ADN DLC, the Asian Domain Name Dispute Resolution Center.
If you are watching me, thank you very much, Denise Kay, and thank you very much, Christine Dorain, um, for remember to remember the AD, AD, and ADNRC, <laughs> and the NAF is two of the arbitration centers approved by the ICANN and by the OP3FT for the UDRPF and UDRP uh, proceeding. Uh, the OP3FT is very proud to, um, to count uh, these two uh, arbitration centers in the Fragrance Project. Thank you very much if you're watching me. So, um, Je suis content de reparler un peu. I am glad to get back to French uh, after uh, being ridiculed myself with two consciences at the same time, says Jean Emmanuel. Right, Thomas, now back to live. Uh, uh, as we said with uh, Stéphane, NEF uh, was very busy. And I was uh, very enthusiastic uh, to allow her to uh, Christine to present the uh, UGRPF uh, to present this, uh, although I know you are very knowledgeable also. And uh, Dennis uh, Sire had uh, recorded this uh, video just before the conference. But this leaves us uh, a little time to listen to you live on stage, to listen to you uh, in very simple words. Uh, can you tell us what is a UGRPF uh, uh, proceeding and uh, in what sense it is important that these two bodies, NAF and AD and DRC, have joined uh, the Frogans uh, program? And, uh, and in what sense it will act as a protection for those who might fear that their trade names be used uh, uh, unlawfully or illegally. Um, so, without getting into the details of proceedings or the procedure, you said, uh, says Thomas, that the uh, trademark holders should be reassured that they have two arbitration centers. That's only a beginning because OP3FT is currently discussing with all of the UDRP um, uh, arbitration centers so that they also be UDRPF uh, arbitration centers. Uh, but these two centers have already um, joined. Would you like uh, to tell us about the UDRPF proceeding? Yeah, we could tell you what it looks like. Uh, as uh, was said in, uh, earlier on, the uh, UDRPF procedure is open to trademark holders who would note that a fragrance um, address or name, uh, w that's the name which is on either side of the star sign, um, uh, the name might be identical and might be a source of confusion and with their own brand. So simply, um, this procedure is governed by three basic documents, UDRPF, which is the charter, so which means the Unified Dispute Resolution Policy for Fragrance uh, Addresses. The same in French now. Uh, now, second, this first document was published by OP3FT on uh, the frogans.org uh, uh, site. The rules for UDRPF are the procedure rules published by OP3FT, and the supplemental rules are more practical, um, down-to-earth rules, because this is where you handle the financial aspects, are published by every arbitration center depending on their own procedures and, uh, and rules and regulations. And once the plaintiff has um, uh, uh, noted that his uh, brand is being challenged, they will turn to whatever arbitration center is closest to them. And once they have uh, formulated their uh, claim and that the conditions of the, the claim have been checked and validated, a panel 
uh, there's one or three uh, arbitrators, depending on what is requested, will be designated, appointed to uh, rule on the uh, dispute itself. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, this is uh, James, uh, the, the complainant or the plaintiff, uh, on the one hand. When they uh, file the complaint, they uh, state that the trademark is existing, that they are the sole holder of this uh, trademark, and that the name, the site name or network name that was uh, registered uh, generates confusion with their own um, brand, and that uh, this was done in bad faith. On his side, um, Jerry, the holder of a frozen site or address, uh, will try to show that he has rights of ownership on the word or the name or in failing which that he is using it legitimately and has a leg legitimate interest in using this name. And this uh, procedure is, um, how to put it, inspired from, from what is happening in reality, because the um, uh, dispute resolution system is very similar to what is existing for UDRPs. This is why. It's interesting to work with uh, arbitration centers that already work with UDRP because we can um, take advantage of their prior knowledge and practice and experience and even um, case law because they have uh, knowledge and that they have built on practices that they have built up on uh, dispute resolution. So this could be beneficial to uh, Frogan's... Uh, well, Kristen Terrain was saying that there were a number of minor uh, tweaks uh, here and there to the change. So, would that have any impact on the procedure or people who are accustomed with the UDRP procedure? Yes, uh, there are three types of changes. Uh, first, the change in uh, terminology. You can you no longer speak in terms of uh, domain name or registrars. You speak of frequent addresses or networks, uh, site names or network names, and the registrars are no longer registrars but our um, FCR account administrators, as we saw a few earlier on, plus the fact that the um, FCR operator uh, will act as the um, registry and is um, active in the procedure. And that's one of the major differences, is that the um, UDRPF decisions are directly executed at the register, registry level uh, by the operator following a decision of the UDRPF and not decided by the uh, registrars or what could be uh, the equivalent of the registrars in the DNS, uh, which are here. Um, the um, account administrators. So, uh, For those who don't know, the FCR operator, or the FCR is the database where all Forgans addresses and networks are registered. Yes, the Forgans core registry, FCR, which is a unique address registry. So if I'm a trademark holder, what should I expect of a UDR PF procedure? Well, let's look at the next slide. Moving on to the third big difference between UDRP and UDR PF. Petitions made via a complainant in a UDPF procedure differs depending on the type of registration. If it's a Forgans address in a public Forgans network, starting with Forgans asterisk, they may ask for that address to be cancelled or for ownership to be transferred to themselves since they are trademark holders. If it's a dedicated Forgans network and the dispute bears on the network name, they may also request cancellation of the network name and the transfer 
of that for against address to the network to themselves. Of course, if they have address there, they can benefit from it. They won't receive the pre-existing addresses. The rights are re-established, and they obtain the network name that corresponds to their brand. If it's a single address within a dedicated Forgans network, here, for example, the site name using the uh, brand name, they can only ask for the cancellation of that address, quite simply, because this is in general, because the owner of a dedicated Forgans network has to be the owner of all the addresses in that for GANS network. If they recover that address, the entire chain, the site name and network name, they recover a part of a network, a for GANS network name that doesn't belong to them. And that's not possible. That's why there's a difference in terms of possible remedies in UDIPF procedures that will differ depending on the type of registration. Stefan mentioned this earlier in the interview of Mrs. Lorraine. Why is it that it's best, or why start a UDPF procedure instead of a judicial, a judicial procedure? if you consider that you were negatively impacted. It's the same procedures for UDRP or an arbitration in general. It is faster, less expensive, because it, a court proceeding, would, the cost would be the cost of the procedure at the end. You can't know in the beginning how much it would cost to each party, whereas UDRP and UDRPF procedures, the prices are set. Each arbitration forum must publish their tariffs and announce it. And as I said earlier, the speed of the procedure is far better than for in a UDIP procedure than in a judicial procedure. Thank you, Tama, for your summary explanations. And I'd like to thank the Arbitration Forum once again for accepting to take part in this Forgans Technology Conference too. What we'll take away from this is that if you're a trademark holder and your trademark is used in a Forgans network or a public address or even in a Forgans address in a dedicated network, you can call upon the arbitration forum to carry out a UDIP procedure and to demand remedies if the brand is used without any rights in the Forgans address. OP3FT is negotiating with the other uh, arbitration forums for a global scope of Forgan registrars. I'll now turn back to Tom, who will be keeping a close eye on this in his job at ICANN 51 in Los Angeles uh, from the 11th to the 17th of October, I believe, in just a few days. I can't remember the exact dates, but thanks to both of you, and thank you, Thomas. So are there any questions in the room? One thing I find striking when I listen to you, all three of you, speaking about the dispute resolution procedure that's been set up for four against is how mature the project is. We really have the feeling that every single possible aspect is dealt with from the very beginning, even disputes. For those of you who know the domain name industry, that was a real problem for years before the UDRP was founded. And since then as well, we have heard David Irving Tarras tell us a lot about it, the fact that we need to continue to live with cyber squatting. So from the very beginning, this project takes 
these aspects on board. Exactly. For your information, UDRP or form of UDRP in Forgan's technology, it wasn't like this at the beginning, but we started to think about it back in 2010 with the World Intellectual Property Organization. And at the time, we realized the need for a dispute resolution system arbitration for these disputes, drawn inspiration from things that already existed. So if the WIPO was contacted, it was for good reason, because the World International Property Organization is the main arbitration forum for UDRP disputes. Thank you. Any questions on that in the room? Or any questions over the internet, if you'd like to use hashtag Frogans to communicate with us. Once again, it's hard for me to see hands in the room. I can't see the hands being raised. That may be a sign that you're all getting tired after these two days of conference. So, Thomas, thank you once again.